Once again, good morning everyone. So we will now have our the second part of our discussion on the Positivist School of Criminology. So if we talk about the Positivist School of Criminology, we could have Dr. Cesar Lombroso as the leading figure. He's actually considered as the father of criminology. So influenced by Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, he integrated Comte's positivism, Darwin's theory of evolution, and other pioneering studies of the relationship of crime to the body. Now, with this study, Lombroso measured the physical features of prison inmates and concluded that criminal behavior correlated with specific bodily characteristics, particularly cranial, skeletal, and neurological malformations. So his book, Lomo Delinquent, or in English, The Criminal Man, changed the concept of free will with determinism. Uh, take note, he developed his philosophy along with his followers, Enrico Ferri and Raffaele Garofalo, which were called as Italian or Positive School of Criminology. So we are lucky for having this uh, existed during this time. It's because when you existed during the time of Lombroso, then physically you could be judged as a would-be criminal. Uh, so what is determinism? Determinism is the concept of defining a certain phenomena or phenomenon using specific factors that have contributed the evolution of its consequences. So in deriving such, Experts use scientific approach as its tool now, in finding out how it affects or causes a certain phenomena. So in, in criminology, as applied in criminology, criminology uses scientific methods in determining the causation of crimes. So that's actually the effect of the so-called determinism in the study. Now, what are the main uh, what are the arguments of Lombroso? with respect to his study. First, biology created a criminal class among human population. So remember, Lombroso, uh, in his study, is more of a biological uh, determinism. Uh, so he cited some biological characteristics as the, one of the causes or factors of criminality. So he emphasized the multiple causes of crime, including environmental causes that were not biologically determined. Take note of this. He also made mention or emphasized on the multiple, multiple causes of crime, which includes the environmental causes. So Lombroso pioneered the case study approach to criminology. No? So, he classified criminals into different classifications. And one of his classification is the so-called the born criminal. So, according to him, born criminals are serious offenders which inherited the criminal traits. No? So, these born criminals inherited the physical problems that impelled them into a life of a crime. So, this is where the criminal anthropology no, could trace back its roots. No, what is this criminal anthropology? So, so these are early efforts to discover a biological basis of crime through the measurement of physical and the mental processes. So measurement of uh, something to do with the biological traits. No? So born criminals, according to him, suffer from atavistic anomalies. What is an atavistic or atavistic anomalies? We define this one as the physical characteristics that distinguish born criminals from the general population. Now, he considered these people, the born criminals, as a throwback to animals or the primitive people. Remember, one of the bases of his study is the theory of evolution of Darwin. So that human, no? The origin of human or the ancestors of human are the apes or the animals. No? So, born criminal, according to him, are the lower form of life. A drawback to their ape-like ancestors than to non-criminals in traits and disposition. 
So this type of individuals are distinguishable from non-criminals by various characteristics, no? which he called as atavistic stigmata. No? So what are these atavistic stigmata? This means the physical features of creatures or creators at an early stage of development before they became fully developed as humans. So meaning, these born criminals most likely, according to him, possesses no, the physical characteristics of his early ancestors, the apes. No, he insisted further that criminals have identifiable features such as huge jaws and strong canine teeth, a trait which is common to carnivores, used to tear and devour the meat raw. No? And take note of this, the arm span of a criminal, according to him, is greater than their height, just like apes, which uses their forearms to propel themselves along the ground. No? Even he further argued that if a person possesses with any five stigmata, as what he provided in his study, he could be considered as a born criminal. No? So, he also classified the so-called insane criminal and criminaloids. So, what is this insane criminals? No? So, according to him, insane criminal is not a criminal from birth, but later become one as a, part, a product of some changes in the brain. So, which causes the effect on his ability to distinguish right from wrong. Now, if we connect it to the present time, then probably we could say that the so-called insane criminal developed mental disorder. So, he could not appreciate the consequences of his action. Another classification of Lombroso is the so-called criminaloids, which he defined as habitual criminals, or those criminals by passion and other diverse types 